Hey fellow fans, welcome to the Valente Loop. You may know it by different names. Uh, if you've been around Austin a long time, uh, we've always called this the Valente Loop. I know recently it may go by Lime Creek or even whatever the number of the road is there that you turn off if you're coming from southbound on Anderson Mill that heads towards Valente. But if you're old school like me, you tend to name routes by where you're going, um, especially when you go up over several different named roads in this case. So I call it the Valente Loop. Um, I prefer to go clockwise. I know some people prefer to go counterclockwise. Today's video is clockwise. Um, and I prefer to go clockwise because uh, the busiest part of the road is this first section I'm about to turn on. So right here, as you're, as you're watching, I'm on Dyes Ranch. If you're coming from the north on Anderson Mill, uh, I like to turn right on Dyes Ranch, which is basically the road just before the turn to Valente. Um, and then it drops me onto the Valente Loop proper here in just a minute. And then we'll make a right. But I like to go this way because Really, the only busy part of this road is between Anderson Mill and Bullock Hollow. Um, and that's a net downhill, it's very fast. And I can just get that over with. And so during the busiest part of this, this loop, I'd rather get the, get the busy stuff out of the way. Because uh, once you get past Bullock Hollow, traffic dies down quite a bit. And then once you get past Valente Village, traffic is almost non-existent heading clockwise. Um, so, it's a great route this is my lunch ride I do this a lot sometimes a couple times a week um, it's just got a lot of great little rollers and, and things like that so now we're on the Valente loop proper and we're gonna drop in we're headed towards Bullock Hollow go ahead and wind it up a little bit and uh, get some speed heading into this downhill um, I'm not gonna talk over this whole video I'm just gonna check in every once in a while as different features and areas come up and uh, you need to need to know a little bit about what's happening. So just a little bit about today's workout. I'm trying to keep a steady tempo effort. So for me, I'm trying to hover around 250 to 280 watts. I'm trying to stay in that window, stay below FTP for the most part. Um, the, the unique thing about the way Valente is, is it's, you're going up or down almost the entire time, very, very little flat sections. So I put on the heads-up display there, I put the, the gradient on there. You'll see that in the middle of uh, my heart rate gauge. Uh, my heart rate was acting up a little bit uh, on these cold days. Um, sometimes it gets a little funky. I'll notice it gets a little high. Um, where I'm just not putting out the watts. And I remember on the day, uh, it wasn't wasn't completely where I wanted it, where it should have been based on the effort. So sometimes when you go downhill uh, before you start to warm up, it, some static from your jersey can make your heart rate spike a little bit, even though it's not happening. So you'll see some of these like 5 and 10 BPM jumps like instantly, and that's, that's kind of where it is. But for the day, I'm trying to stay in 250 to 280 watts. Um, uh, and then uh, occasionally, as you see here, hopping up a little, little, little hotter just to keep the speed up or keep momentum into some rollers. And I'm trying to keep my heart rate between 165 and 175. I start to get over 175, and there I'm getting into lactate threshold and starting to burn matches. And I don't want that kind of a workout. A um, couple things in terms of workouts, man. That you don't really need a structured workout if you're riding routes like Valente here. It, it really almost by itself, especially if you get after it. I'm not really smashing it on this day, but if you decide to get after it, it can really just automatically mimic an over-under workout because it's, you know, a little bit of rest, hard effort up a hill, a little bit of rest, hard effort up a little roller. Um, so it's nonstop. <clears throat> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Uh, Keep rolling along here. The, the the net downhill is turning into a slight of a slight uphill, and then it'll level out a little bit um, as we come into Bullock Hollow, and you'll see a bunch of cars turn left, and traffic will start to die down.
coming up on Bullock Hollow, you'll see a bunch of cars turning left. Uh, on the weekend, on a quieter day, that's a great ride. Uh, even this time of day, it's not too bad uh, of a road in terms of busyness. And you cut that over to the Oasis, get a couple climbs, go up to Comanche and out to 620, continue on the dam loop. Um, great, great little road. City of Austin through a bond proposal in the last election actually approved shoulders getting built on Bullock Hollow, so that'll be cool. Um, so now you'll notice there'll still be some cars around as we approach Valente Village, uh, but uh, the, the roads get pretty quiet here. Uh, and, and as we roll into this next right-hand sweeper up here a little ways, you'll, we'll get into the first roller effort hill of the day. Up until this point, it's been pretty easy to scoot along at, at 20 to, to 40 miles an hour as you're coming down that hill. As you come around this bend here, this right-hander, you get your first real upward sweep of the road, um, and it can catch you by surprise, especially with your when you're with a group and everybody's been going. With a group, you're barely going to dip below 25 through that first section, uh, and so the group always tends to want to maintain the speed. But this little grade catches everyone off guard, and your group compresses, and, and everyone tends to work real hard. So I'm trying to keep it under control, try and stay within my, my, my wattage that I want to be at. And for some of the shorter rollers and, and some of the steep stuff, you, I just can't, at my size, it's just tough to keep it under 300 watts. But for the most part, I'm trying to stay within my, my, my training zone that I've allotted for this workout. And overall, this, this whole loop takes me about 40 minutes um, for this type of an effort definitely under 40 minutes with a group that's getting after it um, so we'll continue up this little road here and then we have our first real fun turn of the day that comes up through here it's one of the, one of those turns where you're gonna be faster through it than the cars so as I come up to this curve um, I'll look back check the lane and then I'll take the lane because from this point on as I start going downhill I don't want a car to pass me right here because I'm gonna catch that car through this turn and the new asphalt's real nice you can really rail through here but even though this asphalt is only man, it might not even be a year old at this point it's starting to develop a brake bumps from cars uh, riding their brakes through that turn so it's getting those little those little waves that it gets and then it launches you into a steep little pitch if you can carry some momentum through there that's real nice and then you have one more little dip up here into a little ramp uh, before you, you have a long, long steady section.
coming up to what will be the most climbing bit of the lower part of the loop here. Uh, it, it gets pretty steep, and so you're going to want to carry some momentum into that. So, so ratchet it up a little bit if you can down, down this little hill so you can carry some speed into this really big roller. It gets pretty steep. You know, if I'm trying to, you know, trying to modulate my effort like I am here, I'm going to have to get into my smallest gear on, on the bike I'm riding today at my lowest gears of 39 28 I don't think that that grading is accurate over there I think the Garmin just kind of kooks out when it when it hits a steep grade right away so now it gets a little more accurate but there's no way it's 25 27 percent but it is definitely above 10 between 10 and 15 um, coming up here and then it, then it levels out it comes one of those where at my size and the steepness, it's really tough for me to stay in the zone I want to stay in. So definitely over 300 watts for a, for a minute here, no big deal. And then we'll just roll on through. And then after this, you're kind of, it gets steady for a while. I mean, really, until you get to uh, what we call the three sisters or the three bitches at the end of the loop. Uh, it's just good, fun, rolling hills with a couple... You know, some small rollers, some bigger rollers, but you pretty much get to cruise um, all the way to the Three Sisters here with one little little short stab, steady, climby hill um, in between there, which we'll get to as soon as we get to the other side of Valente Village. would be tight turns on this road so you'll see all the warning yellow signs here um, and most all of them when you're going clockwise you can take it at, at full speed for the road in fact this one which would be pretty tight on a car uh, you don't even have to stop pedaling you just not so steep that you even have to get your inside crank up you just pedal right through it and there's a few of them um, later the rain starts to happen so the road's a little wet, so I'm a little, I, I go a little easy on, on a couple of the ones that are, that are fun. If you look at the map, you can kind of see where those are going to be. And, and uh, you, you can really rail through those. Uh, northbound, two of those are, are a negative radius uh, of turn, meaning as you go through the turn, it gets tighter. Uh, so we'll, we'll see that in a little bit. Coming up into the Valente Village right now, a little photo spot on the left, that little broken down old building spot if you want to stop and get the gram. Now 
Nice little downhill run through Valente Village. This is the town of Valente, as it were. Um, carry some speed in here. There's a right-hander at the bottom. It's a stop sign for cars that are coming at you and cars that will be uh, coming from your right. Uh, if there's no cars around, I like to carry a lot of speed and actually swing out into the left lane and really carry speed in this because you'll see why here in a second. Uh, in this case, I don't get to because there's cars there, so I take it a little tighter than what I prefer. Then you got this little ramp uh, that you have to deal with. And on this day, if I remember, this is the only uh, asshole I had to face today. That guy was the only guy to buzz me. Uh, I kind of waved at him a little bit. I didn't didn't yell anything just kept rolling but yeah you have this little this little stab of a climb right here and then you can pretty much start motoring and keeping steady in fact I use this stretch sometimes for an FTP test because from right there at that turn up that hill to the top of the three sisters uh, takes me about 20 minutes and it's a good good section for an FTP test although not super steady it's not ideal but the reality is around here in Austin, we just do not have any 20 minute climbs, which would be great for an FTP test. get to a spot where I believe the, the county changes from Travis County to Williamson County possibly and therefore we go from this nice smooth asphalt back to Chip Seal. Uh, so say goodbye to the nice smooth asphalt and say hello to this Chip Seal which in some ways is nice it adds you know 20 watts on a climb so it's, it makes it a little easier to keep it into in the power zone sometimes. But there you go, we're on to this chip seal. It's not too bad, it's, it's as chip seal goes, it's, it's better than most. Um, and here we, we, the rain starts to kick up. It was a chilly day, it was like 50 degrees. Um, so I was a little worried. The rain got just to a point where it was like, ah, do I need to seek cover or not? But So we'll get a couple drops on the lens, no big deal. But I think for the most part, we stay pretty clear here. And we continue on through this section of the loop. One thing about the, the wind, I'll uh, say a little something about the wind on, on the Lente Loop. I like this 
this route because you're never just heading straight north or straight south for very long and that's usually where the wind is a problem in, in the Austin area. Generally south wind is prevailing most of the year. So when it is really windy this is actually a great route to take because the wind between the rolling hills and, and the trees you're never just getting drilled by the wind although it can be hard to tell which way the wind is coming because it'll the wind it has some weird directions as it comes off the lake or comes up and down the hills around here but a, a great option on a windy day if you're like me and you, you want to avoid the wind Coming up on what normally is a really fun turn down here as you drop down this this hill. I really like to smash these. This one you can pedal straight through, but it's a little wet. The road's starting to actually gather water, so I'm being a little more cautious than I might otherwise be on some of these turns. Again, these turns are great because, especially on the on the the sharper ones, we're actually even faster through these than, than people on motorcycles. Um, I've, I've, been annoyed by motorcycles who would pass me right before one of these turns and then I'd be catching them and having to ride the brakes through the turn. Uh, but we're definitely faster through through a lot of the curves than cars, especially on uh, depending on which direction you're going. If you get a good downhill run into some of these turns, you'll rip right through there faster than most cars. <laughs> sharper if not the sharpest corner heading clockwise on here you can really rail through this thing again I'm, I'm being, being cautious because of the wet road even with this chip seal I'm gonna be careful that that one you can really rip through there maybe it's not the sharpest but it's the fastest turn you have a nice little drop right before it go ahead and have some fun there and rail through that <laughs>
name of it is, but this is actually two water treatment plants for Cedar Park and for Leander. And, and I know here this this little kind of uphill we're doing, two three percent, is where we come around this corner, and the wind starts to favor us for a while. A few little crosswind sections again for a prevailing south wind as we come up on this campground on our left. Sandy Creek, there's a boat launch there. If you need to, there is a restroom down there. Let's stop there before myself. But yeah, this is where the wind starts to, to help you get a little more exposure. Our altitude maybe a little higher, I don't know, but the way the hills are situated and the way the wind comes off the lake, uh, if you're, especially if you're getting after it on a lot of day where I'm really smashing it, trying to stay above 300 watts, uh, this is where it, get, it gets real fun. You can really lay down some power Get, in, get into your position and then just you know, push on those pedals and go. And we're about five miles from the Three Sisters, so there, and there really aren't any climbs between here and there. So you can just motor through here and have some fun for a little while.
to the three sisters or the three bitches whatever you want to call them um, it's called that because it's got three pitches on one hill uh, and if you're not if you're climbing a verse it's a tough little climb uh, I, I recommend carrying some speed into this turn here so you can get up this first pitch of the three sisters each pitch is shorter than the last and there's not much of a break in there there's a little break between this first pitch and the second pitch and again I'm gonna try and stay within my prescribed power zones I'm trying to stay in that 250 to 280 space which is tricky you know as this thing climbs above 10% for, for fair chunks of it the roads kind of rough uh, but it's not a bad climb after all uh, and, and you can you can take your time on it and, and settle into a pace that, that is manageable for you I'm trying to get some raindrops off the screen I was going slow enough to do so in the rain it stopped so I figured I'd give it a wipe but here you go three bitches get ready for a little bit of pain even if you're trying to go easy and again on this bike I don't have that low gearing that I do on some of my other bikes I have a 3928 as my low gear here because this is my race bike out just ever so slightly right here the two three percent just feels awesome so I'll, I'll usually catch my breath right here as I come into this into this next one again I don't I'm trying to keep my heart rate under 175 and then we get into this second pitch uh, which is a little shorter than the first <laughs> you'll get another break it'll back off from 10 11 12 13 percent down back into single digits so you get a slight rest and then here's where it gets a lot of people is you'll see this false summit as you, you can see where the road seems to summit but it actually continues on a, a, a few meters you know another 20 30 meters after that so that's not the top of the climb uh, and so you'll want to keep going don't get your hopes up follow through over this false summit.
top now you'll see this little driveway thing on your right and that really is where the nasty stuff is over and you can start to to recover although you'll still be going slightly uphill for a little bit longer it's definitely a little bit of a rest and if you're with a with a group that's trying to get after it you this it still hurts right here because you're still going to be smashing um, and taking it all the way home through this last little bit and you can see the way the curve is the more you go through this the more the wind becomes favorable uh, for our prevailing south wind that we have uh, but these trees are protecting you so you're not totally getting drilled by this south wind but as you tur turn through the, the finish of this curve you get a little push uh, and you can really carry some speed as you finish out the loop so these last you know two miles uh, it's nice to just kind of kind of empty the tank and really get after it for the Valente loop this last section this last mile a little over a mile is fun to just hammer especially you know on a, on a good day when you're feeling good if you get a good tailwind here you can really get after it there's a couple little pitches here you know to finish it out and then it's kind of a downhill down downwind run all the way home uh, there's a store at the end of the road here at Lime Creek and Anderson Hill that opened a maybe a year or two years ago which is nice you can actually make this loop your your workout I know a lot of people that do, they'll do a few laps on this. It's, I mean, it's 15 miles of uninterrupted. It's really the best, it's one of the best roads in the Austin area. Again, I prefer to go clock, clock, clockwise like we did here today. And a big reason for that, and really the main reason is you have to climb on either end of this. It, you, you drop in on one end and you gotta climb out on the other. It's a shorter, steeper climb going clockwise. Um, it's a longer, more gradual climb going the other way. But more importantly, those are the two points, whichever you prefer, those are the points to which you're going to be going the slowest. Um, and on the north end here, going up three sisters or three bitches, uh, when you're going slow, there's way less traffic. I don't think I, on, the, on this day, I don't think I encountered a car uh, on the way up the climb. But between Bullock Hollow and Anderson Mill on that southern part of the loop, uh, it's really busy. There's a lot of cars going through there, and that's that's annoying. You're trying to concentrate on your climb, and there isn't really a bike lane or a proper shoulder on the road. Uh, and so you're going your slow at, you're at the slowest, and you tend to be a nuisance to motorists. So I really prefer the, to go the other way. Um, and you could turn off on the climb and go up Abbotsbury, which is what I do if I if I ever am going the other way or going with a group that just really wants to go that way. Or sometimes the wind is a factor there and we'll go that way. I'll climb up Abbotsbury so you don't spend as much time going really slow on the busy part of the loop. Because the northern loop, northern part of the loop, once you're at Valente Village, all the way up to Andersonville this way, almost no cars and it's very common for you, for me to go for a ride there and not encounter a single car. So even if you want to, you can come in at Lime Creek and Anderson Mill and, and turn around at Volente, Volente Village, which I do sometimes uh, when I'm doing like a like a FTP test. So it's a great stretch of road. 
very unique to the area. It should be on your list. It's, it should be a regular road for you to ride. It's it's fantastic. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, so so go after. Actually, I'll link up a um, I'll link up the the Garmin Connect uh, map GPX file thing. I'll, I'll link that up at the bottom of the description of this video, so you can grab that. But really, once you're on the loop, you, there are no there's no turns. You just ride it. So. There you go, Valente Loop. Get out there and smash. Right on. Mm -hmm.